Scream Queens, Season 2, Episode 4, Halloween Blues, Thoughts. So, another episode I absolutely love. Spoilers for this episode and all the ones leading up to it. So, before I dive in, the top link in the description box allows you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are a number of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So... We open on a shot that treats the viewer to Chanel number one's uvula. I know if Chad heard me say that, he'd be like, I thought that not everybody's supposed to be able to see that. I really appreciate how supportive number three and number five are. Like, you know, Chanel is distraught, screaming, you know, Chad Radwell, my love is dead. And Chanel number three is like, we know that we were there. It's just, yeah, amazing. Um, and we get another epic, as they all are, Chanel number one monologue. <laughs> Denise Hemphill sends everybody out of the room and gives an impassioned speech to Chad's corpse and, you know, can't help but wonder, like, with rigor mortis or certain parts of his body and, you know, lifts to check. Oh, wow, amazing. And, you know, she walks off, but her, you know, her hand, like, traces the, you know, down and then goes back and grabs just, wow. And apparently the, the, they were, we already knew that Denise Hemphill likes to roleplay. Apparently they acted out Brokeback Mountain. And I gotta say, like, you know, Glenn Powell, really glad that he, they, they found a way to bring him back for at least one more episode. You know, his version of Chad imitating, I want to say he was the Jake Gyllenhaal character, he did a pretty good job. That was, yeah. Let's see. And... Yeah, so... They, they talk to Hester and, you know, figure, you know, with enough bait, the, the, the killer will come to them and they'll be able to, you know... But Hester insists that they let her out and even suggests, how about you let me out and I don't tell you who the killer is. And it's like, I'm not sure that's the bargain you think it is. You know, she's not the best at controlling her rage, her murderous rage. So that might have been what, what happened there. And so the, the reading, the, the will is about to be read. And Chad's entire family is died, has died because they flew on the same private, what was it, they flew on the same, yeah, probably private jet, I can imagine, since they were in such a rush. It crashed, you know, the entire Radwell clan has perished, you know, which... Don't want to be like speaking ill of the dead, but I feel like that might be a sign from God. He did not want any of the Radwells to survive. You know, yes, I realize that Jesus is now buddies, well, golf buddies with Chad, but let's be honest, he's always been a little bit of a rebellious kid. But yeah, the <clears throat> Denise wants to know how much money the Radwell estate represented, and she uses George Clooney's career to to try to you know are we talking ER money or are we talking you know uh, the the that, that, ah, crap, I forget what it's called, but that heist movie he did. And Chanel has the, the great line, Where I come from, a sad 20-something is much more important than any legal document. 
yeah, that's 100%, but, you know, I really love the details of the will, the, you know, Chad made sure to have written out, you know, the, the fortune was made using these extremely unethical methods, you know, non-union labor, was it bribery, grifting, just various, you know, and... Yeah, you of course expect it to culminate in, you know, I leave the, the money to Chanel Oberlin, but no, it's it's being left to Kathy Munch for reasons she's well aware of. I really love the reaction, like, you know, as soon as, like, everyone's, like, shocked, like, what does that mean, you know, and Chanel number three knows, so she's like, Everyone should leave right now. <laughs> and Chanel number one roars and leaps over the table and starts punching the the I think the, Mitch Mitchum, Ivan Brogger, who's you know reading the the will. Just wow. And yeah, so Chanel celebrates Chanelloween yet again and. This time is extremely clear about how much she hates what the what IMDb lists as frumpy girls one Julia Boyd, two Nandini Bapat, three Carla Jeffrey, and four Aurora Antonio, and they all give solid performances, like really, really great. Just yeah. And it it is weird that some, you know, some people really like these, you know, mean girl types as Chanel Oberlin. And I love that that actually gets her good publicity. Wow. And, yeah, so she, you know, Dr. Brock gives her this, you know, silver medication and, you know, and she's like, why would you give me, no, just give me one of those, you know, she has, like, ideas that make sense, you know, but no, so, you know, and she wakes up, and she's blue, blue, which is just, yeah, amazing, and I really love, you know, Chanel number three is like, you know, the, the, this color, this is the, you know, it, in, in, what was it, ancient Egypt, it was seen as divine. And, you know, the, the, ver just various, you know, and, and Chanel number one, uh, I'm sorry, did the door turn, you know, change into a TARDIS? Can we travel to ancient Egypt? You know, and Chanel number five, you know, it's just, I love when she's got this, this goofy smile on her face. It's, yeah. You could go as Smurfette, you know, just <laughs> amazing. Let's see, and and yeah, so Denise is setting up for the Halloween party, and the power goes out, which just yeah, that's a that's a bit of a trope. There's a lot of horror movies where the power suddenly cuts, and then of course Denise goes to investigate and she gets a sneak peek at the green meanie when she gets on the floor and you know they they fight and she gets out her gun which is one of those things where like there's so many horror movies where you're like just what why do these why do none of these people have a weapon at the ready you know like in real life I'm pro gun control but if there's a serial killer after you you know and you're in a horror movie yeah there's a certain logic to it Let's see, and the, um, hmm, what is that? No, maybe. Oh, right, right, yeah, uh, Denise, you know, she, she doesn't manage to, to stop the green meat. She talks to Hester, and she's going to put her, you know, she insists that Hester wear the, the Jason Voorhees costume. Because, yeah, sure, on Friday the 13th, they might dress up. 
they might dress up as Jason Voorhees. But on Halloween, people want to be dressed as Mike Myers because Halloween, as we all know, is the movie he did right after Wayne's World. Amazing. Let's see. And and yeah, the um. <laughs> the um the American Beauty. Like, they keep managing to find these super offensive references to make, acting out American Beauty. And, let's see, yeah, the, the, I like the, you know, Denise makes a comment about how she and Chanel have different body types, and then she goes ahead, to, you know, just, yeah, <laughs> You know, she she's, she's basically calling Chanel a skinny bitch without using those exact words, and I appreciate the creativity. And yeah, they're gonna they're gonna use a Ouija board to to find out who the killer is. And yeah, so Dr. Holt is busy the next couple of days, but eventually he'll get around to finding a cure for the blue skin. And... <laughs> and then we, we get another just amazing Jamie Lee Curtis, Kathy Munch line as she says, you know, I'm sure, you know, Chanel, I'm sure you'll be able to find someone as soon as you develop professionally and personally and physically. Physically. Like, she still needs to go through puberty or something. And... <laughs> Ivanka Trump attacks, you know, Chanel and... Just, yeah, really, really great stuff. You know, she manages to, to stab her. I, I love that she actually, she or the Green Meanie, and this does make it seem like they might be working together. She was one of the killers the first season. You know, the the one of them bothered to chain up the door out of there to make sure that she couldn't escape. Let's see, and, um, yeah, yeah, I quite appreciate that Chanel number no. one actually has a lot of respect for Ivanka Trump, you know, if Hitler had won World War II, Ivanka Trump would be, you know, ah, crap, I feel, she would have some position, and, you know, any day now, she's going to be appointed Minister of Propaganda. Wow. You know, the, the show was taking swipes at, you know, right-wing personalities before, you know, back when Obama was in office. And, it, you know, when, when this aired, you know, let's, let me just double-check. Yeah, I think, you know, certain, certainly we... There, it must have been clear that he would be in the White House in the when when this aired. Let's see and yeah, really, really love the costumes of the the various. You know, so Doctor Holt is the screenplay for Batman v Superman a bloody mess uh, you know um, Sh Chamberlain is Mario the the number three is death so, you know she wants to get close to you know Zayday is not that Isis and uh, Denise is is Khaleesi. Um, 
Uh, I can't. Uh, hold on. I have, I'll have a moment here. Munch is Hamilton. You don't know Hamilton? It it reimagined theater. And just yeah, really really great stuff. Yeah, and and number five can't tell Ivanka and Ivana Trump apart. And I appreciate the the point made then you know. As we, you know, as much as we might like to try to forget, we did, by this point, all know that Trump wanted to have sex with Ivanka. So, yeah, that's... And... <clears throat> yeah, and suddenly they're flooded with patience. And I love how, like, at first, it's like... Hamilton people, so it's like, oh, I guess there was a battle, you know, and, and, but, you know, eventually we see there's other Halloween costumes as well. Number three loves St. Elmo's Fire. She would. It is infamously shallow and selfish. Or, or yeah, the movie is shallow, the characters are shallow and selfish, and it's one of those movies, I'm not sure it's I, th I think there's some chance that the people making it, in including, you know, Joel Schumacher, R.I.P., you know, problematic, not a fan of his Batman movies, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure that he knew, you know, R.I.P. nonetheless, I'm honestly not sure he knew that the movie he was making was as shallow as it is, but it's kind of perfect like it's accidentally exactly the right tone for the movie you know it, it could be much more you know judgmental of them but the fact that it's kind of on their side just makes it even more like it feels like the movie was written and directed by one of the characters and sometimes that's the exact right approach to take let's see and so the Ouija board, they managed to contact Chad, and he, you know, he definitely prefers Denise. Like that's not even not even close. He would like them. He would like for Chanel to kill the goat, because he really misses it. You know, up in heaven. Why wouldn't I be in heaven? I'm awesome. And you know, for and, and Chanel's like, what's? I'm sorry. What is happening? I guess it's like a ghost sitch, like I'm Patrick Swayzeing Denise, you know, just and and I I really I seriously respect, you know, both like Glenn Powell in the Khaleesi costume and Nisi Nash as Denise Hemphill, you know, um miming to his lines and just yeah, really, really great stuff. And, yeah, and, and Chad knows who the killer is, and I love how he builds and builds, like, you know, oh, you're not going to believe it. I was so PO'd when I found out. Okay, I got to tell you, but you, you just, you're not going to believe this. Actually, I want you to guess. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The killer is, and then they get interrupted because Chanel is needed for all the, the patients. And... Yeah, I I quite appreciated the the points made that Smurfette and um, Ivanka Trump are basically the same. You know, they live in a fantasy world, and just yeah, just amazing stuff. You know, and yeah. So number five, Abigail Breslin is stabbed by the green meanie and. See, yeah, and we learned that the water was poisoned, but ultimately not fatally. And I really appreciate, you know, so, okay, so Snow White did not go bobbing for apples, but she did take an apple from the, you know, because it goes well with her costume, duh. And it looked kind of tasty, so she ate it. <laughs> Why even bother picking it up out of the, you know, but, but yeah. And at one point, 
you know, I did notice this guy came in in costume, changed out with water. You should have told us that at the start, you know, like, dude, how do you not see the connection? Just, and, and as you point out, bobbing for apples is probably very unhygienic. He was doing them a favor. But yeah, you know, the, the poison, you know, it was an intense dose of ayahuasca, or the same thing as... And, and you know, it's very unlikely to kill. And Chanel number one, of course, you know, goes right over her head. She's like, pretty stupid serial killer, if you ask me. Poisons people with something that's not even lethal. And, you know, this, of course, leads Zayday to realize it's actually a distraction. And so, yeah, you know, she, uh, um, the still alive number five screams for help attracts Denise Hemphill, and I just really, I, I, just such great work on this final, you know, not not every single episode has an equally epic kill, but this one was quite good, you know, the, I love that at first she's like, I dare you, you are not gonna ruin my costume with the punch bowl, that is not a thing that's gonna happen here, and, you know, he does, and then he gets out the, the defibrillators, which, you know, yeah, if you want them to do even more damage, you know, if, if, if you're trying to use a defibrillators as a weapon, yeah, some, some liquid to, to, I forget what it's called, like, transfer, whatever, you know, that's, that's good to use, and Denise just keeps misunderstanding, you know, she's like, no, you don't need to use defibrillators on me, I'm not dead, no, look, I keep telling you, my family does not have a history of heart problems, <laughs> she's, she can't wrap her head around the idea that this is, it's now being used as a weapon, not, uh, you know, just, she knows this guy's a serial killer, you know, it's not the first time she's encountered him. She shot at him earlier in the episode, but the idea that, that a, a defibrillator uses a weapon, that just doesn't make any sense. And, yeah, you know, at the end of the episode, it looks like De Denise is dead and that number five is as well. You know, this is the second time number five, or, or, I guess it's the first time she was attacked, and the first, uh, let's see, the, yeah, the first time she didn't, you know, she, she seemingly didn't, like, get, like, really hurt from it, and, yeah, you know, it is, it is definitely a way to show that this season, that it's, like, serious, you know, the, the, you know, killing someone who was in every episode of the first season. And I think that might... But, but yeah, so it definitely seems, based on this episode, that Hester is working... Was already working with. Like, certainly they were working together in this episode. But, yeah, it seems like she already was working with... The, the killer before this, which is a neat twist on, because, you know, they've done a lot of Sons of the Lambs uh, references this season with her, but in that movie, like, famously so, he is trying to help the, the them catch the serial killer. He's not working with the serial killer. So, yeah, that's a, a good sort of... Yeah. Let's see. And... I think that might be what I have to say for this one. Um, I feel like there's one more thing. Uh, let's see. The, um... Hmm. I think... Thing. Yeah, so, you know, if, right, if Hester is indeed working with the killer, you know, I, she, yeah, she couldn't have been the baby or mother of the, but, you know, maybe it's, yeah, the, she and the, the 
killer or killers discovered each other and then started working together because they want to kill the same people you know the killer wants to kill the people working at the hospital Hester wants to kill the people working at the hospital the specific people working at the hospital the killer just wants to kill anyone working there so yeah that absolutely works right I don't think I I when when you know in season one I don't think I, I fully talked about, like, there's this one episode where Hester, like, returns and says, oh, I was attacked, and then she recounts this urban legend, and then later, number five has been attacked and recounts the same urban legend. And yeah, like, once you know she's the killer and you think back on that, yeah, Hester wasn't attacked there, but she probably just left the... the Let's see, were both of the others alive at the time? She, she talked to at least one of the other killers and said, Hey, I know what we're going to do. We're going to attack number five using this urban legend to, to discredit her. You know, to make it seem like she's in on it. And then, yeah, they actually went and attacked her using that. So just, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is it for this one. So, catch you sometime next week. Keep screaming, Queen.